have an error on your thermostat, in this video I wanna talk about some of the causes, some of the reasons you might have an error on your thermostat, and what you, as the homeowner, can do about it. I also wanna caution you against doing some things, and we'll talk about that more in this video. First of all, realize there are what we call communicating HVAC systems and non-communicating. And what that basically boils down to is what type of technology it is. If it's a non-communicating system, it's one of the old school systems. Literally, the thermostat is a set of switches inside. And it's going to close certain switches and turn certain things on based on what the temperature is on the room, what mode it's in, and so on. Those types of thermostats are what they are. They are switches. They're not communicating. They're not talking to the systems and because of that some of the error messages are going to be I guess less complicated they're going to be hey my wi-fi isn't connecting right now that's not a, a huge concern the system still should be working right things like that not to say that if the thermostat is non-communicating that it may not be shutting the system off for one reason or another but in most cases those error messages are going to be a little more minor than a communicating system now that's not to say that a communicating system is always something extremely complicated it could be minor as well but because it's a communicating system, the systems can kind of talk to one another. They're sending data back and forth, sort of like the internet. And it's sending messages and different types of readings back and forth between the thermostat, the indoor unit, the outdoor unit, and so on, depending on what type of system you have. And those communicating systems can also send error messages if there is actually something wrong with the system. And we're gonna talk more about that later in this video with newer technologies and some of the concerns. It's sort of like a lot of folks say, well, more bells and whistles, it's more things to go wrong, right? You know, they'll say that about cars too. And I kind of agree with that in a way, but some of these messages are meant to tell you something is wrong before there's a big problem. One example might be if you have something wrong with that system, with an older system, you're going to continue to run it until there's a major breakdown and so on. Whereas with a communicating system and some of the technologies we're starting to see, that system can tell the thermostat, hey, something's a little off here. Something is wrong. Maybe we need to look at that. Maybe it's not being maintained right. And now our utility bills are going to be through the roof, whatever. It's going to tell that thermostat something is wrong before you have a big, big problem. So moving on from communicating versus non-communicating, my next thing we should talk about is what is the error, right? So if you're getting error message, what is that error? Some cases with, depending on the type of thermostat you have, it may spell it out right there on the screen. It may say, hey, error, there's something wrong with this or that. Wi-Fi is not connecting thermostat batteries are low, time to do certain things like replacing an air filter and so on. Sometimes it's just minor things. It's going to tell you right there on the screen. Some systems, it may give you a code. It may say, hey, you know, there's an error. It's a D7 error, right? And now you've got to either figure out what that error is or call a pro or whatever that is, but it's not necessarily going to spell it out and tell you exactly what that issue is. Again, I use the analogy of cars, that error, that D7 error, Maybe it's one of 15 different things that could be causing that error. Maybe that error is just that the system is having a hard time moving air through there. Could be something as simple as, say, replacing the air filter. Could be something a little more serious, such as the fan motor is failing, and that's why it's not moving enough air. That kind of gives you an idea of when you're seeing those types of errors, there's a number of things that could cause what that system is seeing and that it's reporting to the thermostat. Next, let's talk about is the system still running, right? So if you're getting an error on the screen and the system is still continuing to run and operate well, that error message could be something, as we said, minor. It could be the Wi-Fi is now disconnected. Something is needing to be replaced or done maintenance-wise. If the system has been turned off by that thermostat, I would caution you from cycling the power. We're going to talk about in just a second about cycling the power, but I would caution against that. Just because the air has popped up and the system is not running, I would caution you from just running and cycling power, turning off the breaker and back on to try to get that error message off of there. You may be able to do that, but we're going to talk in a moment why that may not be a good idea. But the main message would be if it's shut the system off and it's giving you an error message, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe that system is saying, whoa, it's time to not continue to run here because of this issue that I'm seeing here. Let's get this resolved before we move forward. But the last thing I'll say is if the system is still continuing to run with that message up there, we talked about simple things like the Wi-Fi not being connected, 
But I'll also tell you that some thermostats, it's not necessarily an error. It's not necessarily a problem with that thermostat or the system. It may be what we call a timer in that system, meaning some thermostats, you can set up a timer that say after 12 months, it's now time to replace the UV light, the bulb, or at least check it. Some thermostats might have a timer for every 30 to 90 days, replace the air filter. You know, it's just a timer in there. Maybe it's a timer telling you to replace the humidifier pad. There's a number of different things things that we can actually set up as timers in that thermostat where it's not an actual issue. That's one of the things I hate about some of the thermostats on the market is they'll alert you as if something is wrong. It'll have a status indicator light that pops on that you're not used to seeing and a message pop up and it's not something to necessarily be concerned about. It could be just one of those timers. And that is sometimes when maybe a little detective work on your part before calling a pro might be a good idea. And a lot of those timers, depending on the thermostat, you can just literally reset it right there on the thermostat. Now let's talk about cycling the power that we talked about a moment ago. There is a large percentage of errors that will clear or at least allow the system to operate if you cycle power. So if you reset that system, you've gone to the main power and turned it off, turned it back on, and now that system will turn on for at least momentarily and allow that system to work. Now, depending on your situation, if you've talked to your professional and he can't get to you right away, you're now wanting some heat or, or AC, maybe you might decide to cycle that power to get that system to run. My caution against that might be a couple things. The first thing is, in some cases, now we're, you know, we're gonna talk more about error history and such in just a moment, but in some cases, when you do that, when you cycle the power and you make that system operate again, you are making it to where the professional, when they arrive, when he or she is there to repair that problem, you're making it to where that has now cleared. And that has happened to me before, where I get there, the homeowner's got the system going again. I'm not saying it's impossible, but unless I can catch the system in the act, right? Recreate the problem. In some cases, it may be challenging for us to know exactly what that error message was. Now we can check the system over just like a doctor would check you over. And we could try to see if anything jumps out at us and, and maybe even ask you some questions. I always would encourage my guys to ask the homeowner tons of questions. Depending on the answers you get, it could play a big role in where you need to be working, what you need to be testing and so on. But I just want to caution you as the homeowner against cycling the power because you may be doing that. You may be making it harder. You may say, well, I don't care if it's hard on them, right? I want some heat. Just realize you may be prolonging the repair, right? You may be making it to where they cannot repair it right from the get-go because of that. And the other thing that I'll just point out when you're cycling power like that is again, you may get that system going. You may not have any more issues. I'm not a psychic, right? Cycling the power may clear that error and there's a small, small chance that it was just a power blip or something else that it was kind of out of the ordinary and you've now cleared the error and that system is now gonna operate for a while, right? But I would say in most cases, in my experience, if there was a problem, other than say power blips or surges or things like that, in most cases, if there's an error that has popped up on that thermostat and you've cycled power, you've got that system going, maybe it was just a soft lockout or a hard lockout that's now been cleared, you may get that system going again, but that error will return. A little bit of short-term satisfaction only to have future headaches. So just throwing that out there, if you do reset that system and clear that error and get that system going again, it is and a lot of times going to be just temporary and that error will return. Now with some thermostats, and I say some because it's definitely not all, there is a way for the contractor to pull up the error history. And so what's good about that is if you did turn that system off and back on, you did reset it in some way, the contractor may be able to go into that thermostat and pull up an error history. And a lot of these thermostats can be quite extensive. It can give you a log of dates and things and events that have happened in that system or thermostat over a prolonged amount of time. I've seen some logs that are years long, that I'm able to go back a year or two 
and see things that that thermostat has done. See when, say, the power turned off. They might have had a power outage, and I can see that in the error history. And that's always a good thing. I am famous for, I'll pull up an error history on thermostat, and I'll just take a bunch of pictures with my phone so that I have all of that. I have that information as I move forward. Let's talk real quick about what some reasons you might see errors. And we talked about some of the non-complicated ones. We talked about timers and we talked about simple things like the Wi-Fi is not connected and so on. I just want to throw out there as we are moving on and new technologies are coming out, we are seeing that some of these errors can actually be directly because of a sensor that is giving you readings. And it's actually a good thing that it's giving you that alert or error of some kind. You know, there may be an actual safety issue. Maybe the system has sensed that there's a problem with the gas on a furnace or something like that, carbon monoxide and so on. And of course, now we're even seeing technologies where, you know, with these newer refrigerants, some of them are mildly flammable and they're now coming out with code having sensors that will tell you if there's a problem with that refrigerant, if it's leaking. We did a video not long ago where we talked to the guys over at Daikin, the folks in charge of their cloud services. I would encourage you to check that video out because what's really cool is they're now coming up with ways where you can set it up to where your contractor will receive alerts and know if there's a problem way before you have a big problem. Even a small little issue, something's a little off. And what's cool about that is in some cases, that contractor can go into your thermostat without even coming to your home and tweak something, look at something, change something, monitor something, whatever the case is. And I would just encourage you to watch that video, especially before you make your next purchase on your heating and air system. It's just mind blowing some of the stuff that these guys are doing. And it's all to make the experience for you, the homeowner. You spent all this money on the system so that way you have a good experience at the end of the day, that you're being protected, that you're being alerted and so on when there are things happening with your HVAC system. Please note that Daikin has sponsored some of our content on our YouTube channel and the FTC requires that I say so. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them. Comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about the top five energy wasters in HVAC. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.